Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu anna muhammidan rasulallah Ashadu anna muhammidan rasulallah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala al-falah Hayya ala al-falah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar La ilaha illa Allah
festive Eid did uh, so let me begin in alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'kfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusna wa min sayyati amalina man yahdihi lahu falamudila lahu wa min yulil falahadiyya lahu wa ashahadu ala illaha illallahu wa dahu la sharika lahu wa anna muhammadan abduhu Unquestionably, the perfect praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His aid. We seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whosoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his servant and his messenger. Musa alayhi salam gave this dua before meeting the Pharaoh. He says, I will be in the shaitan of regime, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabish Rahli Sadri, Waya Sadli Amri, Wakla Tu Ukla Tamili Sani, Yakahu Kauri. It means, O oh my Lord, expand my chest, make my task easy for me, remove the impediment from my tongue so they may understand what I say. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqku rabaka muladhi qalaka kum min nafsi wa hiddati wa qalaka minha zawjaha batta minhuma rijjala qattira nafsiya wa taqku allaha aladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arhama inna allaha kana alaykum rakiba It is translated, O humanity be mindful of your Lord who created you from a single soul, and from her he created its mate, and through both he spread countless men and women. And have reverence for Allah, through him you appeal to one another, and reverence for the womb that bore you. Surely Allah is ever watchful over you. We thank Allah for this day of Jummah. We thank Allah for this Eid that we are in. We thank Allah for waking us for the best day of the week, and we thank Allah for another opportunity, another breath, to show our gratitude to Allah Azawajal for making us Muslim. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Him, and we pray and we strive that others are guided to this mercy and this blessing called Al-Islam. Any statement that we make 
can be true or false. It is our decision which path we choose. A lie is to make an untrue statement with intent to deceive. It is our intentions. That's the matter here. If you say something untrue intentionally, then you are lying. It has been said our greatest liability is our lie ability or our ability to lie. Psychologists say that we all lie. When we say, I'm fine, or somebody asks, how are you doing? Or if we say, of course I love you, or of course I like you. Or if you say, I'll call you back. In the infamous words of all Muslims, we say, inshallah. Sometimes we don't really mean that we are going to do that thing. But only if the stars align and Allah aligns us to do so. Lying leads to foulness, is what our Prophet Muhammad says. And foulness, foulness leads to the fire. Even a child is outraged by a lie once they find out that you have lied to them. Despite the fact that oftentimes they tell lies themselves. The Quranic Arabic word for lie is kathaba. It means to say something that is not a fact, to tell lies, to deceive. It also means to deny the truth. When someone gives you truth, and you recognize that it is the truth, and you deny it, you are a liar mm. to yourself. And Allah Azza wa Jal talks about people who lie to themselves in the Quran. Now we know of the word for the disbeliever. The root of it is kafar. Kufar means to deny or to cover the truth. Kathaba has a similar meaning, a liar is a denier. They cover the truth so that no one else knows about the truth. A liar is called a kathabatun. To some degree, we all have lied or told a lie in our life, lifetime. But not all of us are kathabatun. The psychologist gives us reason why people lie. They say sometimes people lie for self-defense. They lie because they want to protect themselves from an uneasy situation or from a conflict. And we know that Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the permission to say something that is untrue if our lives are in danger. To say that we are not Muslim. But Allah so also gives us the reward to say we are Muslim if our life is taken away from us is guaranteed paradise. But Allah does give us that permission. Also, some people lie to spare other people's feelings. Some people lie to keep a secret. If you tell me something and you don't want me to tell anyone else, I may lie to keep that secret. Some people lie to have a good image of themselves. Other people lie to be liked by other people. Some people lie to manipulate other people. And we all know someone who is a pathological or a compulsive liar. Lying to them is like breathing. We have all accepted politicians lie. They tell us what we want to hear. We just had a compulsive liar in the White House who was recorded for his four years of lying over 30,000 times. Well, America has been lying to every black person in America for decades and centuries. I say decades, meaning the 400 years that just happened to us in slavery and oppression, they realize or they acknowledge that some form of repair should be the case. Though they gave slave owners reparations after slavery, the enslaved Africans never got reparations. What we got was consideration from colleges and universities. After 58 years of consideration, these liars rescinded their promise. 300 years of enslavement and zero education, another 100 years of oppression and poor education versus 58 years of consideration for higher education. What becomes of a nation that lies in this way? What becomes of a society that elects leaders 
that we know for certain are liars. We get alternate facts. We get people who have their own individual truths, which is utter nonsense. The society begins to lie to themselves. They say to themselves, we are the smartest. We are the wisest. We are the most moral. We are the most upright nation ever in existence. We are always right because we determine what right is and what it is not. Unfortunately, for people that think this way, they are absolutely and utterly wrong. They and we as human beings do not determine what is right. Allah as a wajal does. People today think that truth is subjective, that they have their own truth. This is how they can honestly believe that a boy is a girl and a girl is a boy. Let me show you how false this is by asking you a simple question. What color is the sky? Almost every person that you ask will say blue. They even have a color called sky blue. Well, that is not true. To those who actually know when they say this, they are lying. Just think for a moment. Allah as a wajal says, as bina'a, the sky is a canopy. And then he says, Alladhi kalaka sab'a samawati tibaka matara fi qalki rahmani min tafa'ut farji'il basara hultara min futur. Which means, he is the one who created seven heavens one above the other. You will never see any imperfections in this creation of the most merciful. So look again, Allah says, do you see any flaws? And then Allah says, then look again and again. Your sight will become frustrated and weary. Allah says to us to look again and again and again. You can look all day and all night. You won't find any flaws with your naked eye, with a telescope, with a microscope. But what you may see with your naked eye, you may find a lie. Your, un your eyes are unable to grasp everything. So sometimes they deceive you. When you think you see the sky as blue, tell me what part of the sky is blue? Does the atmosphere have color? Does air have color? Absolutely not. What you are seeing is sunlight reflecting off the particles in the air that appear as blue. Blue lights travel at a smaller and shorter wave so you see them as blue. But the sky is not actually blue, the light is. To help you understand this, ask yourself, what happens to the blue at night? Why is the sky black, black at night? Because there is no sunlight, there is moonlight. All of this means that all eight billion people on this earth have a perception and a perspective that is wrong. Our truth says the sky is blue. Our truth is in conflict with the truth. That is why we submit to the truth. Al-Haq, which is Allah. We have seen the figure drawn on social media of the number six, or is it the number nine? One person sees it as a six, the other person on the opposite side sees it as a nine. The caption says, it's a matter of perspective, as though both of them are right. That is not true. One of them is wrong. Do you know how to determine which one is wrong? Do you know who, how to determine who determines which one is right and which one is wrong? The final say on what the figure is comes from the one who made the figure. Al-Fatir, the originator. al khalik the creator, determines whether it's a six or a nine. Our truth, our perspective, means nothing 
Truth is defined by the manufacturer. Right and wrong comes from Allah, period. If we can have our own truth, then no one ever is lying. But people are always lying, all the time. And we know this. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, there will come to the people years of treachery when the liar will be regarded as honest and the honest man will be regarded as the liar. The traitor will be regarded as faithful and the faithful man will be regarded as a traitor. As I said, the former president had over 30,000 lives and 74 million people voted for him, knowing that he was lying. What happens is lying becomes a part of everyday life. It's no big deal to lie. Shaitan has made their deeds fair seeming to them. One psychologist says, lying is simply a condition of life now. She found that 96% of people have lied to get out of work. By the way, studies also show that the most religious people, the people who believe deeply in God, have strong iman or taqwa, whether they are Christian, Muslim, Jew, or whoever, call out sick the least. Maybe they are sick less than everyone else, or maybe they lie less than everyone else. She also found that men and women lie in approximately one-fifth of all their social interactions that last longer than 10 minutes. So if a conversation lasts longer than 10 minutes, people start lying and embellishing the story. She found that people deceive about 30% of the other people that they come into contact with, which means 10 of the people that we meet today will lie to three of them, is what she has discovered in her research. That sounds like a compulsive liar to me. But one lie does not make you a liar. Allah does not judge people how human beings judge people. Somebody lie to you one time, you call them a liar. Somebody steal from you one time, you call them a thief. Allah looks at the totality of the person. And our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, your continuous lying makes you a liar to Allah. One Sahaba named Abdullah ibn Masood said, the servant continues to lie and a black, black spot grows in his heart until all of his heart becomes black. Then it is written in the sight of Allah among them, they are, he is a liar. This society has become a compulsively lying society. They consume lies. They prefer lies. Fox News has been documented repeatedly for giving disinformation. Yet they are the most viewed news network. They were just recently sued for billions of dollars for lying. The news is lying. <clears throat> so is Google, so is Wikipedia, so is social media. They point you in the direction that you want to hear. Men and women lie for different re reasons. It is found that women are more likely to lie to avoid hurting people's feelings and men are more likely to lie about themselves. The psychologist found that men lie more often to impress other people. A typical conversation between two men contains eight times as many self-oriented lies than it does lies about other things or other people. And Allah as a wajel says to us, do not let their wealth and their children impress you. They're trying to impress you. Their wealth is a test for them. And our test is to see whether we'll fall in love with their lies about what they possess and why they possess those things. And those things are just possessions, by the way. It is not theirs. It is a love's. They tell us that three parts of the brain are stimulated when people are lying. According to science, the first is the frontal lobe, which has the ability to suppress truth, is capable of dishonesty due to its intellectual role. 
Well, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam knew this with zero research 1400 years ago. Or Allah Azza wa Jal taught him this. Abu Jahl, the father of ignorance, and a sworn enemy of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and upon Al Islam, was stopping the Prophet from making salat at the Qabr. And Allah Azza wa Jal revealed that he must stop obstructing the Prophet and the Muslims from praying, or la nasfa'a bi nasiya. We will certainly drag him by his frontal lobe. Nasiyati katibati katia. A lying, sinful frontal lobe. How did our Prophet Muhammad know that 1400 years ago without dissecting a brain and researching it? The second part of the brain is what we call the amygdala. It comes with deception. What some people call, we, that part causes the spidey senses, the tingle, when people are lying to you, when you think you're in a bad situation. It also causes guilt and stress when you are lying. And the third part is the temporal lobe because it's responsible for retrieving your memories and creating mental imagery. Our brain is busy, very busy, when we are lying. It is more peaceful when we tell the truth because that system isn't stressing about lying and your frontal lobe isn't inhabited by making up lies. They say people who tell the truth have poor memories. Liars have the best memories because they have to keep up with their lies. I'm gonna stop now and ask some more for viewers. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Al-Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabihi wa min wala ajma'in The perfect praise belongs to Allah, the guardian evolver of all systems of knowledge. May Allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam upon his family, upon his companions, upon his followers, all together, all over this earth. I would ask you all to listen carefully. Epimenides was a Cretan, and he said, all Cretans are liars. Now I want to ask you, is that statement true? I'll repeat it. Epimenides was a Cretan, and he said all Cretans are liars. Is that statement true or false? If the statement is true, then it is false. If it is false, then it is also true. It's called the Epimenides paradox. It can only be answered by saying that a liar is someone who constantly and continuously lies not someone who lies every now and then. Remember this. Hopefully this is recording because I want you all to go back and listen to this because I intend this khutbah to be a mercy so that believers don't think themselves to be liars. If a wife tells her husband that he looks muscular and strong in this shirt or a husband tells his wife that she looks beautiful in this dress if they don't necessarily believe it. They're not considered liars. Continuous lying, continuously lying makes you a liar. And what you lie about makes you a liar. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and who does more wrong than those who fabricate lies against Allah? They will be brought before their Lord and the witnesses will say, these are the ones who lied against their Lord. Surely Allah's condemnation is put upon the wrongdoers. I study comparative religion. Most Muslims who study comparative religion consider Paul to be the self-appointed 
disciple of Isa or Jesus. Many consider him to be a deceiver. Many give him the category of a liar. He said that Isa or Jesus appeared to him and told him what to teach people about him. Paul taught that death and resurrection of Jesus or Isa alayhi salam brought salvation. Paul taught that Jesus was God, stuck for love, and that he was the son of God, stuck for love. Audu bilah. We seek refuge with Allah. He said he was speaking God's word to the people. Allah Azawajal says, beware, woe to people who write the books with their own hands and then say this is from Allah. I just told you about the Epimenides paradox. Paul used that paradox 700 years later to get the people of Crete to believe in his teachings of Jesus or Isa alayhi salam. And he made the problem worse. Allah as a jail said they seek to fool Allah, but they only deceive themselves. Paul wrote a letter to a man named Titus saying, as one of their own prophets has said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This saying is true. Paul made it even worse. Epimenides believed in Zeus and Paul called him a prophet of God. Paul said Cretans are always liars. He added always and he said this is true. Well that statement is not true so it couldn't come from Allah as a wajel because only Allah speaks the truth. This is one example of people writing words with their own hands and then saying it is from Allah. We are celebrating Eid al-Adha. Well, in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, Abraham, or Ibrahim, alayhi salam, is to sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. That is a lie. It was Ishmael, alayhi salam. And it says that he lied to Isaac about sacrificing him. The people of the book say Allah as a wajal sacrificed his son. That is a lie. To say that Allah has a son is a lie, period. Allah says in the Quran, they say that the most merciful has offspring. You have certainly made an outrageous claim by which the heavens are about to burst and the earth to split asunder and the mountains to fall into other pieces in protest of attributing children to the Al-Rahman because it is not befitting the majesty of Allah to have children. It is important that we understand the danger, the damage of lies and liars. It is important that we understand how Allah Ta'ala and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam define a liar. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam says, whoever narrates a hadith from me, which he knows is a lie, is a liar. Aisha radiallahu anha says, if anyone tells you that Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam has seen his Lord, he is a liar. For Allah says, no vision can grasp him. So that means anyone, no one has a seen, seen Allah as a wajib. And if they have, they are liars. Our prophet gives us leeway for a lot of things, but not for lying. Someone asked him, can a mu'min, can a believer be a coward? He said, yes. They asked him, can a Mukmin, can a believer be a miser, be somebody stingy with their money? He said, yes. So they asked him, can a mukmin be a liar? He said, no, absolutely not. Being truthful is more important than all those other things. You can be cowardly, but you at least need to tell the truth. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam was the most honest, the most righteous man in history. And he was known by his people, his friends, and his enemies for being truthful. They called him Alami. 
the king of Rome asked one of his enemies, Abu Sufyan, did you ever accuse Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam of lying before he claimed to be a prophet? And his enemy said, no, I ain't never lied. But there are some people who are enemies of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who did lie on the prophet, who did lie on Allah as a wajah. There was a Christian who accepted al-Islam. He even read Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Imran. He even helped write some of the Quran. And then he returned to Christianity. And he said, Muhammad wasallam, knows nothing but what I have written for him. So he lied on the prophet, lied on Allah. So he is, Allah causes him to die and his people bury him six feet in the ground. The next morning, the earth had spit him up. And his people said, oh, this was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this was his, his companions. They did that, they, they dug him up and threw him on the street. So they dug an even deeper grave. The next morning, the earth had spit him up again. And they said, oh, this is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. So they dug an even deeper grave, as deep as they could go. And the third day, he was out in, the, out in the ground again. The earth had spit him up. And then they realized whatever this was, it was from somebody who was not a human being. Allah as a wajal was punishing him for lying on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and for lying on Allah as a wajal. This is how Allah deals with those people who are liars, especially lying on this deen. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi says the last hour will not come until there arises 30 imposters or liars claiming to be the messenger of Allah. And there are people now claiming to be messengers of Allah. Allah calls them, the Prophet calls them liars. We must know the signs of people who are lying. Get clues from them when they are telling us lies, from their body language, from their facial expressions, from their perspiring, being nervous and jittery, their lack of eye contact, their wandering eyes. Sometimes people lie and put a barrier in between you and themselves. They step away, they rub their forehead, they lick their lips, they swallow hard, they make fake smiles, smiles that you can see with their mouth but not with their eyes. They give far too many details. You know how your kids do when they're lying? Tell you about a whole bunch of things that have nothing to do with the story. Sometimes they are monotone in their speech, but as long as you let them to continue to talk, eventually the truth will come out. Allah says truth stands out clear from falsehood. Allah says liars have a disease in their heart, and he increases this disease. He says, on the liars be their lie. It's like an albatross around their necks, like a chain strangling them every day. You heard of cognitive dissonance? It is the state of discomfort felt when two or more modes of thought contradict each other in your brain. One or more of these things that you believe are untrue. So you are basically lying to yourself. Forcing ourselves to speak truthful makes our soul and our self-awareness flexible and alert. The stiff-minded, the stiff-hearted person does not wish to change or acknowledge error or acknowledge their weakness. Thus they adjust reality, not themselves, by telling a lie. It has been said that a faithful and true person changes states at least 40 times a day while a liar remains the same for 40 years. One who lies has displeasure with the divine decree, with the al -tab. The truthful person's victory is the power of his intentions and his prayers. Adam alayhi salam's victory was the honesty of his prayer. He said to Allah, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves, speaking for himself and his wife. By the power of sincere admission, Allah forgave his faults. May Allah protect us from the liars, and may Allah protect us from lying. Peace.
Brothers and sisters, don't forget your zakat obligation. If you want to do the zakat via cash app, it is dollar sign M W S A L A A M. If you want to mail it in to those people listening, it is 614 West 35th Street, Norfolk, Virginia 23508. Or you can mail it in at PO Box 1802, Norfolk, Virginia 23501. I'll be here tomorrow, inshallah, and Sunday for Fajr prayer at uh, 4.30. Uh, there won't be any Talim on Sunday, but there will be an Arabic class at 11 o'clock. 
I uh, encourage everyone to come out to the Arabic class. Um, if you are need to learn Arabic, it'll be a great tool. If you are already uh, fluent in Arabic, you can help with the class, inshallah. Um, there's also a community meeting that'll be going on on July 9th. So I wanna make sure I keep reiterating that until uh, it comes up. And last but not least, our brother Bilal Muhammad, his son Ali Muhammad, uh, returned to Allah last night. May Allah, may Allah uh, forgive his errors and grant him paradise. Uh, it is very unfortunate and I wanna do everything we can in our power to reach out to him and his family. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him this morning. Uh, it's a difficult thing to have to uh, bury your son. So we all need to be have him in our prayers, have him in our dua, reach out to him. Uh, I did, like I said, I did speak to him early this morning um, and I told him to get back with me. I know he's probably talking to all kinds of people and he knows everybody in Norfolk uh, for his uh, stop the violence effort. He was just here last week and we were uh, giving him tribute. And um, it's unfortunate, unfortunate, but Allah, we, Allah calls people back at the time that's unexpected. So um, please reach out to him and his family. Some of his family members are in the back right now. Um, just be mindful. Uh, we got to protect ourselves. Be careful. I don't know the circumstances to what happened, but um, be safe out there, brothers and sisters. So, um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Brother Abu Bakr, told you to give. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I ain't seen him in a couple months. I need to see Brother Abu Bakr. Yeah, hey, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You put in the trash over here.